Right, so appalling light, I apologise. I'm going to do my best now to quickly show you. This is a problem painting that I sanded back and I was talking about letting go and painting big and emotional and just making the worst painting you can. And that's what I'm going to do here because uh, there's nothing else to be done with this anyway. So I've mixed up a quick palette. I've got a really basic palette of black, white, yellow ochre, burnt umber, um, and I've made a grey to get started with. So it's going to be not a pretty palette anyway. And I'm just going to get going. So, so I'm scared to do this. Start with black because that's like the can't do anything after you've done black, can you? Um, right. Get a different brush because it would be really dirty. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre against black is nice because look, yellow ochre is a very saturated colour, so against that black it's nice. Uh, but also nice against black is burnt umber, but that's more transparent, so it's not going to pop quite as much. I do like parts of that textured cream, so I don't want to lose all that, but I'm going to lose all that uh, blue on this one. Take some grey, it's not really thick enough paint there, roll that up. Remember I'm making the worst painting I can here, so it's a fairly low bar that I'm going for. Mix up some yellow ochre with some white. Uh, and I keep a bit of, there's a bit of a map in there, so I'll keep a bit of that still showing through, I think, for now. Uh, and then, I know there's dark on there, I'm scratching with my hand, just to do something a bit interesting. more grey and up here next to this yellow ochre and some grey in here. Right, and now we're getting an ugly painting going. Uh, now I'm just going to stop you for a sec. Now this is, I've just dried it off a bit because otherwise everything goes muddy and it's not quite dry yet so I still might get mud. But this doesn't feel bold enough and emotional enough to me yet if I'm going for emotion. So I need to be bigger with my brush strokes and I've got really dark now I've gone black on here. And I'm just, right now I'm just thinking about everything that's pissing me off. And um going in here, putting that in here. Uh, now it's all black at the moment and I might not want any black in my final painting but that's all right because we're just going for loosening up and getting over that fear. I think it's getting really dark. I've got this orange oil crayon -y, pastel -y thing. I'm just gonna put some of that in. Remember, I'm going for ugly. I'm not trying to make a nice painting, but I'm putting some of that in just to bring some brightness to it. I'm not sure that's done enough. So what about some fuchsia? It's not part of my paint palette, but there's a bit of it in here that was left over from the other painting. So just go in and do this in here. See, it's got some feeling of something's happening on here. One of the things that creates drama and emotion in a painting is contrast between light and dark. Um, so I'm just going to go in and put some kind of, again, it's all about the execution though. It's got to be done with confidence. And even if the mark you make you don't like, because we're trying to make an ugly painting, it's got to be made with a sense of vigour, otherwise it won't come across with that um, 
life that you're trying to get in so at the moment that's what we're going for we're not going for a nice painting so i'm just i'm just messing about here but it's all about just letting go and not being frightened and i think um the fear of painting emotionally can often be the fear of feeling the emotions that will come up when we paint emotionally um i'm uh quite uh, it sounds poncy to say I'm quite an emotional person and I'm quite aware of my emotions and pretty much ruled by them so I don't have any problem accessing that and painting from it but if you protect your emotions guard them then letting them out on the board or canvas can be difficult because you don't do that generally um, but this is what Seth Golden talks about is the importance of facing the fear he calls it dancing with fear it's the importance of letting go when you feel fear his theory is that means you're about to do something important um, and therefore you should feel the fear and then go do it um, because this the fear is telling you this is something important you need to do um, and if it's the case that what you're worried about is letting go um, painting big Maybe what you're worried about is letting go and being big in life. And that's something to to just face into. Go do the big painting and see what happens. Um, it won't kill you. Um, see what comes up. Anyway, that's my suggestion. So here we are. We have an ugly painting. What can we do to make it worse? This is what you have to ask yourself now. You're not trying to make a nice painting. You'll get caught up at this point in trying to make it nice. So what can we do to make it worse? We could scribble on it. Mess up any areas that we think we like. And then my suggestion, when you get to this stage right now, you have a really ugly painting. Right, so you've done the hard part now. You've covered up that board. You've got your big emotional brush strokes. Big, bold, crazy brush strokes. Um, You've done the worst part. Now you start to think about what parts of this don't please me? What don't I like? And then mix up a very light colour, white mixed with a tiny bit of black or white mixed with a tiny bit of yellow ochre, whatever you want. And then take a big brush and if there's something you don't like, do a big brush stroke, one brush stroke over that piece that you don't like and then leave it. Do the next part you don't like. Cover that up. Then step back, look at what you've got now, and then go back in and react again to what you've got now. Um, that way you've got a living painting that you're constantly working with. That's one way to get started on this painting big and bold. But we now have a painting we can work with. So go do it. <laughs>